Hey guys, I want to walk through the steps of doing some decoration for type, adding some texture, adding some color, some highlight, uh, make it look like it has a realistic texture on it. So we're going to walk through those steps in Photoshop. So let's get this going and fire away. So what you've got here is a sample image where I have what you can see is uh, the word rust written. Um, it's, it has a rust texture applied to it, and then it's resting on top of this diamond plating, and it looks like it has realistic lighting and, um, and texture applied to it. Looks like it's made out of that material. Now this is done with a few steps in Photoshop, and, I'll, and I'd like to walk through those steps so you understand how you can take uh, a couple pictures, combine them with your text, add a few highlights and shadows, and give it that realistic appearance. So for those in my class, I do have those files that you can download, or uh, if you're just following along, you can look for your own photos and give it a try. We're going to start with a new blank document just to kind of get us going and get it set up. And for this, it doesn't need to be a huge file. Pretty much, I'm just going to go with a standard uh, letter size page, uh, 8 and a half by 11. I am going to go ahead and use the landscape orientation. So I'm going to go ahead and hit create. And now I've got my document to start with. Now, I have already collected the files we're going to use. And I want to put the diamond plating down first. So I'm going to go to the file menu and I'm going to use place embedded. Place embedded is a nice way to add photos to an existing document in Photoshop. Notice how I started with creating the blank page first. Sometimes people like to go grab the photo they want to use for the background and open that in Photoshop and then start editing. The problem with that is if your photo isn't the right size for your final product, then you could be putting yourself or backing yourself into a corner by using the dimensions of that downloaded photograph versus your output dimension. So here, I already selected 8.5 by 11. Now, when I place the photo I'm going to use for the background, that photo adapts to the size that I set ahead of time. may not be a big deal, but sometimes you'll run into a problem if you use low-res pictures and um, these things aren't the right size. Okay, so let me uh, get to the file folder we're using. Quickly grab that uh, diamond plating image we're going to be using and diamond plate it's a png file i'm just going to place it and it's going to drop it in notice it comes in at the proportion and scale of that photo and that's what i was talking about where the dimensions don't quite line up with my intended output so now i need to scale it and stretch it um, this picture not going to be a real problem if i stretch it up and down Interestingly, depending on which version of Photoshop you're using, they've changed something that has been a setting that has been the same for 20 years. But if you hold shift in Photoshop now, you actually stretch. Where shift used to keep things in proportion. Gotta say, as a longtime user, it's a little bit annoying to shift, to switch that one, to shift that one. So anyways, stretch it, fit it. Now it's in place. Um, notice the photo I chose already had kind of the darkening edge. It looks like it has a little bit of lighting applied to it. And we're going to do that with our type to make it look like it belongs on this surface. So the next thing we're going to do is go to the type tool and just type out the word rust. And for this, I'm just going to take that type tool, click, tap, and type rust. Depending on what font you have, on your computer, you're going to change this, but everybody should have probably impact or something like that. Um, some kind of big aerial bold black something. We really want to have a big thick font for this. Um, notice I went ahead and highlighted it. I'm going to scale it now to stretch it to size. So I'm going to switch to the move tool. And then I'm going to go to the edit transform and scale under the edit menu. 
And again, now in Photoshop, if you just stretch something by default, it stretches it proportionally. And each one of these is gonna be a little bit different, but I kind of like that somewhere in the middle. Um, it's always a bad idea, by the way, to stretch fonts, to squish them. Um, it's always better to keep fonts in their same proportion. Generally true for photographs as well. We got away with it on this diamond plating because you, there's nothing really recognizable in it. But if you stretch and squish a face, bad idea. So you always want to keep things in proportion. All right. So once you've scaled it and it's done, you can either hit return on your keyboard or hit the check mark up on the top of the screen. And now that scaling is done and the, the lettering is, is set in place. So now we're going to do our little Photoshop magic to give this thing some realism. Uh, I'm going to wait to put the rust texture on it until later. Let's deal with shading and shadowing first. So um, right now, obviously, it's white lettering and it's just floating there on top of the diamond plating. What's going to make this look realistic is uh, some realistic cast shadows underneath the lettering to make it look like it's actually in the setting. Now, looking at the diamond plating photo, the light looks like it's coming from above. It's shining down. That means that it's going to hit the, the word rust if this was a piece of metal floating above it. The light is going to hit it from the top and the shadow is going to extend below it, stretch down uh, below it underneath it. And what that means is if you use the typical drop shadow, which you find in Photoshop, it'll work, but it won't look realistic. It'll look kind of fake. Here's what I mean. If you highlight the text layer and then you go to the FX button at the bottom of your layer palette, that's the uh, special effects button. I'm going to select here um, drop shadow, which is at the bottom, and it's going to pull up a little dialog box. And that dialog box is going to let me see um, some settings for, uh, for the rust. And let me pause one second. There we go. Sorry, the window disappeared. So here we go. Um, back to the uh, drop shadow uh, styling box. I'm gonna try to move it here to the side so you can kind of see it and zoom in a little bit. The shading is kind of light, so I'm gonna darken it up. See how it's casting the shadow that direction? That's because the angle of the shadow is set at 90%. The distance is pretty high, it's 66 pixels. Spread is 17, size is 30. You know, that's just kind of an accident. It looks pretty good. You can stretch the size a little bit more to have it extend. Um, and you can slide these sliders back and forth until you get it to be something that you want. And I tend to think that it should be stretching down more. So the distance should be higher. The size should be a little higher. That diffuses it, makes it look a little softer. That's actually looking pretty decent. Um, it wouldn't look realistic if it went the other direction. See how the light source is above, so it would be weird to have the shadow extending into the light source. So again, it's better to have that angle set to 90%, so it's stretching down. We wanna see the shadow extend downward, extend downward away from the letters, and that's good, and so I'll just click okay. So that's the first step, is applying that drop shadow effect to the rust. But there's something else we can do to give this an added little, you know, add a little bit of realism. And that will be kind of a blurred shadow. Because um, in real life, there's ambient light, there's other things going on, and additional secondary shadows, cast shadows and highlights and things can appear. And so the more of that you can embed into your design, the better. So we're gonna create. We're gonna make a little fake shadow here and I'll show you how we do that. Um, between the diamond plating photo and the rust word, we're gonna add a new blank layer. So I'm gonna select diamond plating just to make sure that I'm on that level in my layer palette. And I'm gonna click the new layer button on my layer palette, the little you know, paper icon down at the bottom corner. I'm gonna select that. Next, this is a cool little trick. 
I'm going to make a selection box out of the word rust. So it's the exact same shape. Really cool tip, hold your command key, or if you're on a PC, hold your control key on your keyboard and click the letter T on the layer palette for the word rust. Do you see how that made a little marquee selection around the shape of that word? That works on any layer, by the way. Any layer that has a, an object on it, if you hold Command or Control on a PC and click that layer icon, it'll automatically make a selection out of it. Really handy. Now, I, for this to work, I need to make sure that I have selected the blank layer and the selection is active. Now, I can go ahead and hide the rust layer so we see what happens. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna hit the eyeball on the rust layer, hide it. And now you can see, I have the blank layer selected with the rust outline still visible. Now what I'm gonna do is fill that with black. So I'm gonna to go to the edit menu and I'm gonna select fill and I'm gonna paint black inside that selection. Under the fill menu, I can select black from the dropdown and just hit okay. And now you can see, boom, it's got that black filled into that outline shape, painted, done. Now we're gonna do some tweaking. So to do the tweaking part, I need to deselect. So on your keyboard, you can press Command D or Control D, that's your shortcut. Or under the select menu, you can just hit deselect. Either way will do it. Now what I'm gonna do is do a little blurring effect on this and blending so that it looks like it's a stretched cast shadow. So to do that, I need to go to the filter menu and I'm gonna click on blur. And I'm gonna go with Gaussian blur. Now what Gaussian blur is gonna do for me is it's gonna take that black outline shape and it's gonna just fuzz the edges a little bit, get rid of that harsh um, text outline. So I'm gonna do the Gaussian blur and increase the pixel radius a little bit. It's showing me a little preview here and it's kind of showing me what it's doing on the screen. I don't need to do this a whole heck of a lot. Um, but somewhere around 25 pixels, at least on my scale of image, looks pretty good. See how it just made it all fuzzy? That's good. And we're gonna click OK. So now that you know, crisp, clean lettering has turned into a fuzzy outline. Next, what I wanna do is stretch this and turn it into a stretched uh, shape. So I'm gonna go back to blur, but this time I'm gonna select motion blur. So filter, blur, motion blur. And this is where we need to pay attention to which direction the shadow is going to blur the motion is gonna blur. Right now the dial is set horizontal. I'm gonna type in here an angle of 90 because I want it to go up and down. And then I'm gonna change that distance, increase that distance. There, you see how it's stretching it up and down a little bit? And I'm gonna go ahead and do this a lot, like maybe, I don't know, 250 pixels or something like that. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna click OK. Now to complete the effect and make sure that these two layers blend together, the rust shadow and the diamond plating, I need to change the blending mode in my uh, Photoshop document. So I'm still on the rust layer and I'm gonna look for the little normal drop down menu on the layer palette. And what I'm looking for is multiply. What multiply does is it takes whatever is on that layer and blends it pixel by pixel with the layer underneath. This is really good for blending colors, blending shadows. And so in this case, it's blending the black color into the diamond plating underneath. And it's gonna make it look like it's painted on the surface. So I'll hit that multiply and I'm gonna lower the opacity a little bit. There we go. Yeah, like maybe 70%. There we go. And I'm gonna use the down arrow on my keyboard to nudge it downward a little bit. So I'm gonna tap a few times. Um, that didn't do much, so actually I'm gonna use the move tool. 
I'm just going to hold the move tool, select it, and drag it down just a little bit. What, I, what that did is it, you know, pulled it down a little bit so it wasn't exactly lined up with the original white text. Now let's see how this looks when I turn the white text back on. Amazing. No, you can't even see it. Um, let's try turning it off and on. I can barely see it, so I need to move it more. I'm still selecting the, the shadow layer, and I'm dragging down a little bit. Maybe even off to the side a little bit. Okay, it's really pronounced. Now I'm moving it down, you know, scale-wise, looks like maybe I moved it an inch down to the left and the right. And if I turn it off and on, you can kind of see it. Do you see how much more dramatic that looks now that I've painted that extra shadow on there? Much better. Okay. But wait, there's more. Now it's time to add a little styling to the words. And then at the end, we'll add the rust shape to the, uh, uh, the rust texture to the, um, to the letters. But first, we're gonna do another little special effect to the word rust. I'm gonna go back to the special effect menu, again, making sure that I have selected the rust layer. I'm gonna select that little FX button, and this time I'm going to select bevel and emboss. Now what bevel and emboss does, it adds a little edge to anything on that layer, a little highlight and a shadow edge. It's hard to see on this particular picture, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and increase the size. There, you can kind of see if I increase it up to like 20 pixels, you can kind of see it. How it puts a little bit of shading on the bottom edge. You can't really see the highlight because this is on a white, um, uh, on a white color. But anyways, so I'm going to try chisel on the technique here under the bevel. It's gonna give it a little more of a chiseled look. And actually now that with the chisel look, I'm gonna reduce the number a little bit. Yeah, somewhere around 10 pixels actually looks pretty good. And then click okay. All right, now it's time to bring in the rust layer. So I'm gonna to go to the file menu. I'm gonna to go to place, place embedded. And I'm gonna go to that folder of uh, images and here I've got rust. And I'm gonna scale it down a little bit. So it's not quite so large. I just need to make sure that it entirely covers the word rust. That I don't see the word rust peeking out from the end at all. You know, I don't want that. You need to make sure that the photo covers entirely the word rust. Okay, now I have a problem, right? That photo needs to be shaped and masked into the shape of the uh, rust layer underneath the text. Now you can make a, a clipping mask and you could go through those steps, which is perfectly fine. But there is a really quick and easy way to mask one layer into another especially a, a layer like text that has a transparent edge. Here's the way it works. You need to hover your cursor on the line between one layer and the next. So I need to put my cursor right on the line between the rust image and the rust word. And I need to hold option or on your PC alt. And I need to get that down arrow cursor to appear. What that down arrow cursor means is that this, this layer is gonna mask into the layer underneath. And then you just click once. And so you can see what it did. It brought that photo and wrapped it into the shape of the, the layer beneath it. Really handy. Next, I need to make that photo um, multiply into the, to the layer underneath. So I'm going to go on the normal setting under the layer effect for the blending mode and select multiply. And that's going to help the bevel appear better inside the, um, 
uh, inside the, uh, the photo itself. Okay, now, um, not quite finished because the lighting effect on the rust is different than the lighting effect on the diamond plating and the shadowing we just created on the layer below. So we have to add an additional shading effect to the word rust so it feels like it belongs in this same setting. So essentially what that would be would be a, a soft transition from maybe bright to a little bit darker as the light would be cast across the word rust. So we're gonna do that similar to the way we did the, uh, the blurred shadow. So I need to create a blank layer above the word rust. And then I'm going to paint a gradient into uh, the rust shape and make this kind of blend with the, um, the picture underneath. So um, I'm going to change to my gradient tool. And then I'm going to make sure that my colors are white and black on my foreground and background. And you can select the little black and white if yours isn't there on the default. You can select the little black and white and the back and forth arrow so that white is your foreground color, black is your background color. And then with the gradient tool selected, you're gonna come up here to the gradient picker up on top and make sure that you have the black and white gradient selected. So now it's gonna paint black and white. Next, all you gotta do to use a gradient is just click and drag. And I want this to just go from top to bottom. So it doesn't really matter where I select, except I'm clicking somewhere near the top of the word rust. And then I'm gonna let go of my mouse somewhere near the bottom of the word rust. And it's gonna paint that gradient into the scene. Um, problem, obviously, it's covering the entire picture. I'm gonna use the same trick I used before. I'm gonna use Option click, click that dividing line between the layers, and this is going to mask the gradient into the rust, into the type underneath, but now I can't see the texture, right? Well, all you got to do, go to that layer, make sure that you change normal to multiply, and it, you can see it's now blended over the sur surface of that rust. Now. It's a little bit too dark. So what I got to do here is adjust the opacity of that shading. So it's a little bit softer. Good. Now, there you go. You've got a fairly realistic lighting effect applied to a texture, applied to text in a, in a photograph. So whenever you're trying to do these kinds of cool realistic looking type effects. You need to use Photoshop and use some of these tips and tricks to make it look more realistic. The better you are with your shading and your lighting, the better successful, more successful you're gonna get with your design. All right, so thanks for listening this time. See you next time.